Nityanandam. Today I wanted to answer that question that I'm sure many of you are thinking or asking. Why a guru? Why do you want to worship someone in the human form? Aren't you unto yourself? Isn't there enough in the scriptures or enough in our temples, our churches, or wherever we worship? Why do we need to worship someone? Now, if you're from the Hindu faith and you have a guru, nothing is left to said to be said. But if you're not, I'm sure these questions are there. And I had these questions too, because even though I was quote unquote born a Hindu, I actually didn't practice much when I was growing up. So I didn't, only through my mother, I kind of was learning about why a guru. But I still never felt I needed one, and nor did she ever make me feel like I needed one. It was something that just sort of happened to me after I met Swamiji. But what a guru, especially a guru like um, Swamiji, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda, what that means is it means we are living life right now, right? Which life means we have good times, we have bad times. We go through our ups and we go through our downs. And it just happens. And we learn a lot along the way on our own. Sometimes we have supportive family. Sometimes we have awesome relationships. Sometimes we hit the peak of success. Sometimes we hit like the depths of our lows. And we manage. And we learn from our mistakes and we go on. But if you have ever asked some of the bigger questions in life, like, why am I doing what I'm doing? What is my purpose in life? Or what happens after I die? Or why did I come down and why am I with these people? Why am I in this profession? Or is there God? What, and what does he or she look like? Whatever it may be, everyone, once they've, they've lived enough, if these questions come, way, come some way or another, or there may be some tragedy that we've experienced or something that really shook us. Either it could be an illness that happened to us or a loved one, or it could be some kind of tragedy that happened around us that we witnessed or some maybe world event that shook the world, like some terrorist attack. All of these things make us stop and make us think, what the heck is going on? Am I really doing what I want? Am I really getting what I want out of life? For me, I really wanted to know what I should be doing with my life, like professionally. It was very limited in scope. I was very kind of clear on the other things. I was going to get married. I was going to have kids. All that's fine. But I felt like my what I studied in college was not really leading me towards my passion. So I was exploring different you know, professions, different graduate schools, all those things. But what I found is that those questions were very deep questions. Wanting to know your purpose in life pushes you to many other questions and makes you really look in and see what makes you happy. And then on the reverse, why do we go down? What makes us sad? What makes us mad? What makes us depressed? Whatever it is. And those things you can do on your own. And that's what we all do, or that's what I was doing before I met Swamiji. But when I started first reading his book, Guaranteed Solutions, so many clicks and clarities came to me just from reading that book, where I started to understand my emotions. I understand, started to understand the way the mind actually works and why I am the way I am. It was such a beautiful introduction to spirituality and applying spirituality to the practical world. And I felt such immediate benefits just from reading that book. Like literally, I felt stress that was like in my chest, just leave me. Um, and I read that book like, I used to read like, you know, more like science fiction, fantasy type books, which there's no like, um, you know, reality, you know, everyday reality. And but this book, it was not the type of book I would read, but I was reading it like the way I read one of those other books very voraciously. And it was so like mind blowing for me. Fine. But I still had no idea what it would be 
to um, have a guru or even seek one. It did not cause the seeking for a guru, but it caused me to want to learn more about this kind of um, understandings because it was helping me. So I attended Swamiji's program. As I mentioned, my mom basically pressured me to attend. But again, more and more openings happen. And what I understood is Swamiji has achieved the ultimate understanding in life. He is an enlightened being that is like his name, Nityananda, means eternally blissful. Come what may, his space doesn't change. His space is always in that state of Nityananda. And that felt so right to me, even though I haven't achieved it. I knew that was the way life was supposed to be. We were not meant to suffer. We're, we're meant to be always fulfilled, always happy, always okay. But that didn't mean that Swamiji was just, you know, sitting there doing nothing. He is the most active being, an uh, active expression of getting things done than anything I've ever seen before, experienced before. And I had worked in like, you know, a lot of high pressure, you know, New York, Manhattan type jobs where you have to like hustle to, to get the job done. And, but what you see Swamiji is like, he's able to make such amazing things happen in this world and help people at all levels in life. But no matter what happens, whatever comes his way, his state is untouched. His state is just so blissful, so compassionate, and so infectious that just by looking at him, just by being around him, just by reading his words, just by watching his satsang, it has an effect on you. So what that means is a guru is someone who has conquered life, someone who can help us conquer life. I mean, that's literally their their purpose is to help us navigate the the ups and downs of life in the right context without any medication without any um complicated techniques it's just simply giving us that intellectual understanding and that solid experience which swamiji being a hindu guru all of the teachings in hinduism support the disciple support the individual on his path of seeking. So now I can say, I don't know how you live without a guru. See, if you want to be an expert at tennis, or if you want to be an expert at piano, or if you want to be an expert and conquer some test or something, there are schools, there are teachers, there are private instructors, there are institutions that will help you get there. Because there are people who have spent hours and committed their life to learning those fields and they've decided they want to help others achieve what they achieved. Same way with the guru. He or she has, dis has experienced something so profound that benefited them and they feel it's their mission to help you and me experience the same. And that is sort of the ebb and flow of Hinduism. Our gurus have, they come and they go and they help so many people along the way. Whoever's willing and ready to listen. You're not forced to have a guru. It's up to you. But when you have one like Swamiji on planet Earth right now, who's just showering his disciples, who's just disciples, who's just giving them all sorts of tools, techniques, life solutions, understandings, um, shaktis, um, powers, initiating them so that they are basically radiating extensions of him. So you may still have the question, why a guru? But I hope I brought you to my understanding of why not a guru. If you're living in this body, in this life, and you want to achieve something. Maybe it's not enlightenment. But if there's someone who's radiating the truths of thousands of years of research and development. And it's saying, hey, here, I'll come help you. Just, you have to listen. You have to 
be present, that's all, then why wouldn't you take advantage of that? It has nothing to do with worshipping someone. It has nothing to do with feeling that you're not good enough so you have to look for someone. No, the worship comes in because you're doing it out of gratitude. It's not who you worship. It's what happens to you when you worship. And when we worship, when I worship Swamiji, I get lifted. Nothing happens to him. I add nothing to him. And I get to express my gratitude in those few moments of worship and puja. So those are more like side effects that continue um, and actions that help continue the growth down your path. But that's not the purpose of having a guru. The purpose is to evolve, to understand life as it is and experience and live life. So if you have any questions, maybe I've not really hit at what your um, doubt is or what, please just put it in the comments field and I'll answer it. And I just hope if there's a seeking inside of you, consider the possibility of having a guru. Okay, I appreciate it so much for listening. If you made it this far in the video, I hope you have a wonderful day and look forward to my next video and sharing it with all of you. Nityanandam.